System 8, and today I want to talk about what makes it one of my favorite synthesizers compared to uh, what I might have to show you otherwise. There's a lot that uh, really exemplifies uh, some of the more versatile features of the System 8, like its digital engine, which may be a really big part of what somebody has to consider against it to start, but it is the biggest contributing factor that makes this thing uh, spectacular to use. And uh, not the least of which is the sound, because you'd be hard pressed to know the difference or even appreciate it compared to something uh, true analog like the SH-101 here, which I have uh, hooked up to the machine, or, uh, or, or any synth that it rivals, because it sounds, uh, it sounds fantastic. to compare it directly with the Juno 106 and the SH-101 and uh, the various uh, synths it tries to emulate. And it's, it's as close to flawless as you could ever appreciate. But uh, that's not what I'm going to be focusing on today because uh, what makes it such a special piece of gear for me is some of the stuff you can do uh, outside of the actual synth engine itself, like uh, controlling external gear. I've got the SH-101 uh, routed through a CV, and if we turn up the input here, you should be able to hear it. Nope. Maybe it's uh, just through CV that I can play. So I'm going to turn down System 8 here, and this is just uh, 101. And that is actually one of the neatest features uh, right out of the gates that the System 8 here does as a controller. If I go into the menu here in the system, I'm going to go over to CV controls. So we got our uh, CV and gate out right here. I could change the bend range if I wanted to. Uh, how do I do that? I could scroll it all the way up to an octave. Or uh, your standard two semitones. But uh, it's really the legato functionality that's built into the System 8 here that makes it uh, the most capable controller. Uh, the SH-101, it has portamento and automatic uh, function built into it. If I turned legato off here, let's see. So that's just the, the portamento of the SH. If you wanted to, or if you didn't have that functionality, and I found uh, synths like the Korg uh, Monopoly or uh, or a couple of options that I've uh, been able to play with otherwise don't have that legato functionality built in, you could plug in the uh, System 8 as a controller and, uh, and, and have it available. So we're going to turn it on here, Portamento Legato, and I'm just going to turn the I turn it off on the SH-101, so... You could make it real short if you wanted to. Or real long. Another fantastic feature that's built into the uh, System 8 here as a controller is the ability to route audio into it. So I have uh, the SH-101 being controlled by the keys of the System 8, but the audio is being routed directly into uh, 
the inputs here. And if we wanted to, we could uh, put some effects on that bad boy. So I'm gonna turn on a little bit of a delay here. <laughs> into the effects section uh, for the inputs. There's a pre-delay and low cuts and high cuts and densities. The reverb's actually quite a, a deep build. The same goes with the delay. There's a couple of different functionalities here. Let's see. You could synchronize it or the different types. There's a pan, a standard delay, a chorus. You've got uh, the Juno choruses built in there as well. So. <laughs> That's uh, almost worth the price of admission alone, a delay and a chorus. Uh, and then we might as well, we just add in the SH-101 built into the System 8 here. You could double it up. Another big part of its easy use is the fact that it's basically a USB audio interface. And so right now I've just got it uh, plugged directly into my laptop and we're streaming into uh, Logic and recording directly from the machine. I'm not uh, worrying about extra audio cables from the outs or gumming anything up uh, just in the transition. It's a digital audio signal and it stays that way all the way through. It really makes it easy just to plug in and go and use a thing wherever you want, however you want, or as a really capable controller for a lot of the VSTs that are available, but specifically the uh, Roland Cloud Synths, because if you've got the subscription there, it acts as a one-one controller for any of the uh, built-in plugouts, but uh, essentially anything that's available from the Roland Cloud. So, uh, assuming we pick the Jupiter 8 here, and you see how all the lights change on the thing as I cycle through the different... Oh, there's that Juno noise, the, uh, the chorus there. But you see the lights change on the machine, and that just helps you know which uh, functionality is available for each synth. Because the plugouts alone are uh, some of the most beautiful sounding things that I've ever had the pleasure of screwing around on but the system 8 uh, engine itself is one of the most capable too and in the last uh, year some of the big upgrades some of the big uh, changes that they've made have really brought this thing into a, a different category of sound uh, where you might have had very traditional uh, subtractive analog uh, sounds or or something a little more bread and butter when it first came out the uh, the new oscillators in these uh, settings here variation two or three or four just makes for some uh, wild FM synthesis or, uh, or or those broken digital sounds that you'd never be able to find otherwise. I'm gonna switch back to with System 8. We're gonna turn our volume down here. That is an initialized patch. And we're gonna go to some, some FMs. You could modulate that with the LFO. And uh, the LFO got an upgrade too. You get some wiggly, wild uh, LFOs going in there. <laughs> 
LFO modulating an LFO. And so that's all built into the oscillators. You get some, just some dirty sounds out of this thing. That's, uh, let's see, a couple of L rhythms on top of each other. And maybe that chorus, because I really like that chorus. sequencer here is one of the better features built into the synth as well and uh, I feel like it's one of the most overlooked because it's a really capable machine within a machine and something that you can use to sequence other gear simultaneously or uh, or just generate some cool song ideas right away let's uh, pick a batch here rich low bad <laughs> just be a sequence loaded right in there. That'd be way too easy. Um, maybe we could do step recording. And then uh, five here will be. change our source from the keyboard to the step sequencer and we're just going to see what happens when we press we're going to turn that down press start we're going to turn this up Ooh. maybe we need to get rid of that uh, portamento let's see what a terrible terrible path Find it. We got it. Let's do it. So now we got a cool random sequence going on the S8. Or we can just make it go back and forth. Zigzaggy pattern. Now you're playing the sequencer, 
Um, as I understand, you could have that sequence going on the SH-101, you could be riffing around on your uh, System 8 here and uh, have some bi-timbrality going or, uh, or just get a couple of different grooves moving at once because it's really neat to have the sequencer going on an external piece of gear or, uh, or on one half of your uh, two parts here and riffing around on uh, your other option. Uh, other than that, there's just a lot of fun that's built into this guy. Like the first moment I got my fingers on it, it was a real cool experience. It um, doesn't have some of the features that I, I really appreciate on some uh, top tier pieces of kit, like a built-in uh, aftertouch or, or uh, uh, maybe a more capable delay, but designed as a, uh, a replica of some of the vintage synthesizers or uh, keyboards that like didn't necessarily have those features to advertise when they came out 30 years ago. It's a really smart uh, recreation of those and what you might have uh, been looking for when it comes to uh, a vintage analog synthesizer or even something a little more uh, modern and complex, like what you can do with the digital oscillators or, uh, or the filter models, which is something that I didn't spend any real time on uh, just because I'm all over the grid here. There are eight different categories of uh, filters built in and uh, a number of different types of uh, each category. But uh, other than your standard, let's see, we're just gonna go back to nebulous dreams here. So that's, I think that's the system one filter. Actually, when I was making that patch, we're just gonna flip over to sidebands because there's some wild sidebandy sounds that come out of this thing. Honestly, I couldn't even explain to you what that does. Over here, sideband one. Better on a init patch. something a little different that uh oh no, no 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 those are lfos oscillators there we go something weird <laughs> it's like a robot of some kind um and we just flip over some other sideband here just to see there's a uh, system one filter <laughs> I always thought it sounded mean. There's uh, actually all kinds of different uh, poll options for the system one. You got your Jupiter 8 and your Juno 106 and your formats. The, the Jupiter 8, the Juno 106, they are sweet and silky, just like you would hope. Actually, the uh, Juno filter is probably the, uh, the truest. It really has that, uh, that screech. <laughs> Why? 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 
And uh, those weird format filters, we'll just leave some envelope action on there so we can hear it. There's a vowel. You guys have fun. There we go. System 8. Uh, I'm going to be trying to make some more of these videos and uh, focusing a little more on uh, gear and uh, things I like and maybe things I don't and uh, making a little more connection with the outside world. So if you like what I'm doing here, uh, let me know and tell me what you want to see because uh, I hope to be a bigger presence uh, going forward in 2020 and uh, I got a good feeling about the new year. So we'll talk gear and we'll talk here and uh, I'm going to try to have a little less fear. So see you soon and thanks for watching.